Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Practical Training Professionals right here on YouTube, ptpgun.com, firearms training. You're joined today by myself, Mike Bell, my partner over there. Ryan Gass. What's up, Ryan? How you doing, man? Feel pretty good. Just got That's a fresh right. haircut. Fresh haircut. We'll get to that in a minute. So today, guys, we're going to jump into the top five semi-automatic handguns on the market today. I know I've got my opinion on what the number one should be. I've got my opinion, too. As expected. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to get right into it. Bam. All right, guys. So starting off our list today is arguably the best semi-automatic on the market. If you're going by parts availability, available available firearms out there at your local gun store and just general popularity okay today the number one that we're going to go over is the glock 19. now this firearm is probably the most obvious only because it's so popular. There are literally thousands of these firearms on the market today. I would say, I would venture to say millions even. Uh, yes, absolutely. They are, <clears throat> they are relatively inexpensive, uh, common, very easy to find. And the aftermarket accessories are just through the roof, right? Ryan and I like to call them the Jeep or the iPhone of firearms simply because Everybody makes a part for the Glock 19. Yep. Magazines, sights, holsters, everything like that. Um, and then with the latest fifth gen that just came out, you're going to get optics ready. So if you're into that RMR or that hollow sun life, you can do that too. You're going to have an improved trigger and better grip for your firearm. Now, Ryan, why don't you tell them about number four? Number four, we have the Sig Sauer P365, and this is very comparable to the Smith & Wesson MPs, the Shields, the Glock 43s, but 365 has kind of taken that compact handgun uh, realm, it's taken it by storm in the last two or three years, and they have three different, I think three or four different variations, they have the XL, they have the, uh, the what is it, the SAS and stuff, uh, but they've done really good at competing in that market, and they've taken it over pretty good, I know a lot of our customers have bought one of them i'm not gonna lie i haven't bought one yet it's been on the list for a while uh but i'm considering moving my glock 43 and instead getting a 365 going forward for my appendix carry you know what they say about the sig right was it's that? like the goldilocks they've got it's because they have the xl the x and then the sig just a plain p365 it's neither too big or too small it's kind of just, just right, right. Yeah. that's right guys yep yeah so it is it's, it's been pretty uh it seems like everyone has had, I've never heard a, a bad thing about it. And with the capacity being with 15 rounds, it's, uh, it's very good. But I mean, ex ex compare it to my Glock 43, Glock 43, my standard capacity magazine is six uh, rounds. And I've added, uh, I've, I've changed things on it to make it uh, hold a little bit more, but right out of the box, 15 rounds, that's pretty solid right there. Absolutely. Now, Mikey, what do you have for number three? What do we have now for number three? All right, so we just covered the most popular. We also covered the best micro compact, and yep. that's in the 365. Today, we're going to talk about what some would call the best carry for the month. <laughs> now, this is one of my everyday carry firearms. This is the Smith & Wesson m and Shield 9 I have mine in the 2.0 with the TS. And the TS isn't top secret. It just means thumb safety, okay? What I like about this and, and being for the money, you could generally find these somewhere between $250 and $400, okay? So I know, all right, it's not 99 cents. It's not the, you can't get it at the dollar store and it certainly isn't a high point. But for the reliability and the quality that you've come to find with Smith & Wesson, that $250 to $400 price tag is going to be just right. Now, they also make this firearm in the 40 caliber, but in its size with that caliper, it's it's going to be pretty hard on your wrist. With your uh, Smith & Wesson MP Shield, you said you had the thumb safety one? I do. How do you like the thumb safety? 
the thumb safety isn't that bad. And, and like we always teach in class, right? That's part of, that's an addition to the, the fundamental safety rules. If you have a safety roll on safety, that way you could take it off. Right. And you practice taking it off. Now I don't mind the thumb safety. What I really don't appreciate if I had to nitpick Ryan, if I had to pick something out of that firearm that I didn't really like, it would be the stipling on the grip. It really is an aggressive grip texture. And I find that depending on the shirt that I wear, like, you know, I'm kind of a big body. So I like to wear some sh some clothes that are a little light. Yeah. And especially with the sweat, right? I like that micro... What's that texture I'm looking for? You know what I'm talking about? Like yeah, that athletic, it's, it's like, the, yeah. the athletic textured shirts. Yep. The stipling is so tough that it grabs the shirt and That's it kind so of moves up. it around. Yeah. So yeah. if I had to, if I had to like say one bad thing about that firearm, it would be the aggressive grip texture. Now we'll say that you have the Gen Two. If you have the Gen One, it doesn't have as much uh, stipling on that grip and stuff. So maybe you go to the Gen One. That's right. But for the money, guys, this thing is very easy to shoot. It doesn't have the same, like, it's not the easy model, so it doesn't have that that grip safety on it. It really is just the thumb safety. Now, for the money, I would say that the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 9mm is arguably the best semi-automatic out there. Now, some of you guys are old school. Some of you guys remember, like, the first subcompact uh, semi-automatic that came out. So Ryan's going to go ahead and talk to you guys about that car CM9. Ryan, why don't you let him have it? Yeah, so next up on the list, number three is the car CM9 uh, and or the PM9. And I found a lot of customers that like them. I will say the reason why it's not as high up on the list is because a lot of the customers that I've had, they notice, and I notice it too, that pulling that, racking that slide back is not as easy and stuff, especially for some of my, what I would call my more mature customers that have a lot more age on them. They don't have as much hand strength and whatnot. Uh, they don't tend to like that part of it but other than that i've i found that a lot of them like that they're a lot more comfortable with it and they shoot a lot they shoot pretty consistent with that so that's been on a list pretty solid there uh we don't often hear about the car arms these days but about 15 years ago they were a big player in the concealed carry market they've kind of taken a little notch down with a lot of these you know canics and stuff coming up uh but they still are holding a pretty solid ground yeah and with that when they came out they were the first single stack Right when they came out for so they were kind of that introductory to that smaller frame concealed carry firearm. Right now, they do kind of have like a long filling double action style trigger. Very, so, I hate that trigger myself. Yeah, but for you know, it's the original. The reason it's on the list is because it is the original single stack concealed carry firearm. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Yeah, that, that trigger, it, it's very comparable to like the SCCYs, what I call the Skies. Uh, they have a very, very long trigger pull and a very, very long release as well. So I will say that's why it's not on top of my list, personally. Absolutely. So let's finish it up, guys. Now, this list wouldn't be complete if we didn't mention... Some type. <laughs> some, some variation. In, in some variation of the 1911. Now, I mean, the name says it all, right? This this is the one that everyone, and the, the way that I describe it here for the video, guys, is this is the semi-automatic handgun that everybody thinks they want. Yep. And the reason for that is because this firearm literally was designed 100 years ago, mm -hmm. 110 years ago. Yep. The, the You literally have to d completely take this firearm apart to really work on it. It's a mess. It doesn't have the modern... You know, now a lot of people are manufacturing, but they're still manufacturing to those old specs, right? And with this, though, you could buy them from, you know, your $200 Saturday Night Special all the way up to the 2000 and plus yep. range. Wilson Combat is what I want. Wilson Combat, your your Kimbers, your Nighthawk Customs, all those different variations, right? Um, this thing demands to be on this list just because of how popular it is. Mm -hmm. And this is the list of the most popular semi-automatic handguns. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I've, I had a lot of customers that, you know, they either love it or hate it, honestly, to a certain extent, not everybody loves them, but like, uh, I will say like, whether it's a cheapo, I have a little cheap, uh, American tactical, not little, it's honestly big. I got a cheap little, uh, American tactical made in the Philippines. I don't know why they call it American tactical. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and I've had some people that love that gun. Uh, one of my past, 
favorite guns because my taste change over years. But I had a Kimber Pro Tac two, and uh, I love that gun. But I will say, um, I was having issues at, with it at one point in the, in the safety, the internal safety uh, for the thumb safety, it broke internally, and uh, we got it fixed and stuff. But I never trusted after that, so I ended up getting rid of it. And that's actually a 1911. I I had bought it, and then I traded it out. And then I traded back for it, and then I sold it again. <laughs> and then I bought it again. I owned that same exact 1911 three times, and I finally was done with it. But I'm not out of the market. I, I'm eventually going to buy another solid 1911 like that. But I th I'm leaning towards the, uh, not the Colt, but instead the Wilson Combat. You know, and that's the thing about the 1911, as we mentioned with the Smith & Wesson, is that because of the popularity, they're starting to make them in different calibers also. So if you're trying to find something that matches the ammunition you're already buying, you could find that. And that's one of the reasons it's made it on this list, right? It really is popular. Uh, a lot of people talk about its rake, its hand, its, uh, its rake angle from the proportion between the barrel and the hand grip. You know, that's a, it's a really comfortable firearm, but it just doesn't quite hold up, you know, yeah. and that's that's my opinion. I will Your say, opinion may vary. Yeah, I will say my mother-in-law, she has not a Colt, but she has, uh, what? who makes that? Oh, man. Had a brain fart. Oh, Browning. It's a Browning yes. 1911. Browning 1911 in 380. So uh, she has that. I have a couple hosts that uh, that have our classes at their spots. Particularly the one out in Ocean City, and uh, she has one as well. And they love them. They were they run great, real smooth, relatively small, but has the same solid 1911 action as well as the the, the solid look. And uh, so if you if you're looking for a 1911, but you don't want a big one in 45 or, or even nine mil, uh, try that Brownie in 380. That's right, guys. And if you want to come out and try to shoot some of these firearms yourself, yep. make sure you head over to ptpgun.com. Ryan puts on one of the best premier kind of experiences here in the Mid-Atlantic region. It's called the Handgun Buffet. Head over to the website. Keep your eyes out for a Handgun Buffet. And if you'd like to come out to that Ocean City date that we have coming up, look on the website. It's coming the end of April. The weather's going to be perfect. And we hope to see you out there. Ryan, any last words? And if you need help getting signed up, you can call or text Mike. I'm going to give you a cell phone number. Uh oh here we go. 240-925. What is it? 5788. Five, Call her, guys. Call or text him. He will help you out with anything. Again, if you got, if you want to call or text him, make sure you do it at <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. He loves that. He really loves that. <laughs> if you call at one o'clock in the morning, I will follow up with you the next day. And I've got this bit that I like to do. If you call me at one o'clock in the morning, I'm, gonna call I'm you calling back. you back at five a.m. because that's when I get up. So with that, guys, as Ryan and I like to say, as always, learn, defend, and prevail. We're out. Stay strapped. Get clapped.